Let's start. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom 1, the games that made me. This game truly made me. Right, I loved Killer Instinct. I loved a lot of fighting games. I loved Street Fighter 2. I, I loved Tekken 3. But there's a good reason why MVC 1 made me. Um, not only did I take this game really seriously, this was like one of the greatest arcade games of all time, in my personal opinion. Uh, I, I do like it more than Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I think MVC 1 holds a really special place in my heart because it was one of the fighting games that I truly started from like nothing and then figured out how to get good at. Uh, this was indeed the fighting game that forced me to learn an arcade stick. There was no way this game was coming to home consoles like anytime soon when it came out in 1990, either 1998 or 1999. It was pretty, it was pretty late in the 90s. There wasn't any options to play a version of this game that actually looked good. In fact, after the Dreamcast version came out, it took even another year and a half or some crazy shit for the PlayStation to get a version of the game. So, I literally um, learned through the rawest of experience, just get your ass beat. I loved the game so much, I thought Strider and Gambit were like the coolest characters fucking ever. And I just wanted to be good with them. I just wanted to do the sick double jump Strider combos. I wanted to do the cool Gambit confirms. I wanted to do all the stuff that I saw, all the really good players I saw in the arcade all the time. Um, this was the game that like motivated me. I saw it, I liked the way it played, I liked its roster, and I liked a few characters, and it was like love at first sight type shit. So over the span of like, you know, half a year I'd say, I lived very far away from my arcade, man. I spent any opportunity I could to get as close to it as possible, and then would have essentially Marvel vs. Capcom money saved up. But, funny enough, it would take a lot of quarters, however I had some tricks. at. My arcade, <clears throat> there was a little machine called Jungle Jive. And in this machine, you would see a whole bunch of quarters piled up on a, on a tray that would go back and forth. And if anybody's ever been into an arcade, you know exactly what we're talking about. Where the, this machine would essentially drop a quarter in, they'd pack on top of the other quarters, and then push other coins down, and then compensate you with those coins, right? So here was my trick. Uh, I got so good at this Jungle Jive machine, and it allowed me to get better at Marvel vs. Capcom. Why? The machine at the mall, at the arcade that I played this game at, did not reimburse you with tickets. You would put an arcade token into this thing, and it would feed back arcade tokens. So whatever the reward was, you, would you were able to get back a whole bunch of in-store credits. They eventually had to change this because it was like people complained that was gambling. It was because almost I felt sometimes I was there to play Marvel versus Capcom, but I was actually there to play Jungle Jive. I was there to get more tokens. So I, uh, I got really good at this machine and knew how to spot a moment that would be a guarantee money. Where if I put in like 50 cents or a dollar, I can get like five bucks worth of quarters back if I, if I had the right opportunity to do so. So it wasn't like I was shaking the machine or anything. No, I just knew how to play the rounds. So in between waiting to play Marvel versus Capcom, people would, people, un, 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 noobs, right? Like casuals would go play Jungle Jive and I would roll by like my 13 year old ass and be like, huh, you guys gonna play next? They're like, no. One quarter, bam, pick up this huge change thing. And that would essentially allow me to get good at Marvel vs. Capcom. That would allow me to stay at the mall for extended periods of time and not just be bored to death. So at any point, I was like, get me out of where I live and allow me to go to the mall to play some MVC because it let me get better at Arcade Stick and it let me get her at the, bit better at the fighting game that I thought was the greatest shit in the world, which was MVC1. If it wasn't for that, I would actually say, if it wasn't for that, it would definitely probably not be the same case. I might not love this game as much, I might not think it looks as good as it does, but I, I had the opportunity to play the game a lot because of that. This game holds a true place in my heart. This is the game I learned how to play on Arcade Stick. Like, I actually learned how to play this game on an arcade stick. And the greatest part is that, oh, there was a big Marvel vs. Capcom community. Oh my God. There was a whole bunch of people that loved MVC1 and the game always had a shit ton of people playing it. There was always a crowd around the MVC1 machine. And I grew to knew, know a lot of these guys, not be good friends with them, but they would like know me as the Gambit Strider player. And it would be like, this kid's actually pretty good. And that felt good, you know? Cause all I wanted was to like my, my gameplay to represent 
what you were. That's what, you know, in the arcade days, that was essentially what people looked at you as, was like, how good are you at the game? And that's where you essentially would get respect, so. Did you meet the dudes around that time? Oh, hell no. Oh, absolutely not. No, I wouldn't meet the dudes, the, the collective dudes, until like, Close to se uh, five to seven years later. Marvel vs. Capcom holds a really special place in my heart, and luckily it seems like it does for a lot of people, especially considering the, the visual design of this game. I think MVC1, for as crazy, bonkers, weird, and nutty as it is, is easily one of the best-looking fighting games for a classic old-school 2D fighting game. I think it looks better than X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and even Marvel 2. I think the art style of this game is like... Um... I think the art style of this game is 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 absolutely one of the best things Capcom has ever done. It's such a great looking game on the eyes. Um God man. Should I pick Resident Cheap Shit, Wolverine Strider? I'll just pick uh I'll just pick Strider Gambit. And I'll pick the, the the cheap assist. Yeah, I'll try to remember some more assists. You have to give me a little while to remember. Look how crispy this guy is. Look how crispy this game is, man. Let me shrink my ass. <clears throat> you know what? If I die, I want to do. Ch I want to pick Chun Li so we could uh, try the uh, the onslaught quick kill. Chun Li can do forward HP against onslaught. Oh, six buttons! Oh God. Rogue! Oh, I didn't get the damn relaunch. Wow. Strider, you suck. All right, that works for me. Game is a lot better, right? The game is a lot better on the, um, uh, with no flashing. The flashing's a bit much. Quick refresh. And look, look at the, look at Strider's JoJo pose. Sweet Jesus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the, uh, the assist rock. So good. So much charm. Even the backgrounds are beautiful. Let's see if I can get Strider's, uh, Mega Man, quit being a bitch! Cool! Get him, Lou! Hold on to this. Here's a cat. Whoa! Hold on to this. What? This one. There we go. This one. There's a really interesting playstyle with Strider, um, which isn't as good as the normal playstyle with him, which is like spam super. Uh, Strider can camp bomb in this game a lot because bomb does a lot of damage. This is like like 15, 20%. So I got Colossus by random accident. Um, you could camp bomb and the bomb will just come in and act like a combo breaker. It's super dope. Uh, can I get the relaunch over here? Okay, all right, I'm bad. Oh no! Roll, I'm gonna grab. Okay. Damn it! Oh, Gambit, let's see what your gameplay is like. Ow! Ow, I'm getting fucked up. Okay, whackity whack.
God, I need a macro. So an interesting tidbit about the game is that dashing in this game is actually hard. If you do forward, forward, and back, back, it's not hard. But if you want to dash quickly, I got Colossus again, holy shit. You have to press all three attack buttons and down repeatedly. It's actually difficult to strike all three buttons on the same frame in the game. So if you want to repeat the process, it takes, it takes some time to get used to this, the wave dash. She's fucking me up. Okay. Tap, 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 tap. Okay. God damn, that's so cheap. You just wait a beat, wait like one second. If your character tags in from the team combo, it causes a hard knockdown. You can't roll out of it. So you essentially do an OTG super and they're dead. You are fucking destroyed. But you have to land the kick, the come in. How does the game feel on arcade one-up cabinets? Pretty good, to be frank. There is, if you want to find one of the biggest communities there is for Marvel vs. Capcom, like in an online environment, it's definitely Fightcade. And no kidding, the the arcade one-up machines have a shit ton of people that play them. Okay, okay. Oh man. Keep is gonna. Bad idea, bub. Go, Jubes. Ow, 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 ow. I'm over here now. There's that good shit. There's that. Oh, I'll try to do the infinite. I'll try to show off Gambit's infinite if I can. The timing isn't that hard, and it's one of the easiest infinites ever. Yeah, this game does have quite a few hidden characters. That is honestly one of my biggest gripes. The hidden characters of this game, like, break the game. Specifically, Hyper Venom, uh, aka Carnage, if you want to call him that, as well as uh, Gold War Machine. Those characters, like, break this game. Hey. Oh my god! Ow. Oh, that Strider does not have much mixed teleport here. Ow! One. Okay, Spider Man. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough because they usually hit you. I'm gonna try to get it. Jump. This is bad. I should have picked uh I should have picked a different character. Like Colossus, this would actually might not be so hard. Oh shit. Oh man, that was it. Oh, ow! I'm gonna grab your ass. I'm gonna grab your ass! I wanna do it! Clutch, oh god. If I didn't roll out of that, I would have been dead. Okay. Unfortunately, it might be kind of hard to do the infinite. Did you ever hit anyone with a Gambit Infinite at the arcade for being a shitbag? So the funny thing is, the, here's the funny thing. Things like the Gambit Infinite, people were already doing way cheaper stuff, right? Uh, Gold War Machine and Hyper Venom were already way cheaper and way better. Uh, the Gambit glitch wasn't discovered 
uh, in my arcade until a bit later. In fact, I remember I was going to go do the Gambit glitch against some people, and I couldn't because Marvel vs. Capcom 2 had just come out. Bummed out, man. I just, that was it. That was it. Jump at me. Not like that, though. Do it, do it the way I want you to. I'm gonna die! I'll take that. Oh wow, this timing. Hold on to this for you. Yeah, you hold on to that. Nice! <laughs> One of my favorite mechanics ever in a fighting game, which leads to the most broken aspect of NBC1, is the team up, right? Where both characters come in at the same time. I truly still can't believe that they functionally did that. And it would take so long for it to eventually come back, right? It took until MVCI for you to allow both characters on screen at the exact same time, controlled by one person. I love that shit, man. I am Ready. Fight. Uh oh. What's this done? What's this done with Strider? Uh 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 uh. Uh, it's medium, heavy, heavy. God damn, choppity, choppity, chop. Onslaught's a cool looking boss. From from what many people tell me about X Men, Laurie is kind of lame. But look at this shit. No one is Holy fuck! Oh, ow! Ow! Lou, get him! Oh no! Go this way. You go home. Ow! Oh, that really hurts. Ow! Oh, it hurts. Streeter Hiriak is dead. Oh, backdash! Ooh. Well, I think I can. I think I can do this here. Wee! <laughs> it worked. Wait for it! Oh God! Dickhead! What an asshole! There we go. <laughs> it super bugs out because the screen is too big. It was Professor X the whole time? Oh my god. You're still playing with sticks and cards, I see. You have both the beauty of and the thorns of a rose. She's captivating. Oh, is Rogue gonna beat my ass? Oh, what's this? Having fun without me, sugar? <laughs> Just when I thought I was about to have some fun. Morgan aggressively wanting to get in everybody's pants. That is just her. That is my character, and that is what I'm going to execute on. Also, the most charming credits in a Capcom game ever. Right? We're going to take all the assist characters and make them play with each other? I love these credits, man. This shit is... Everything about this game is so beautiful. Now, if you want to play it competitively, let me tell you, you're going to run into some brick walls. <laughs> if you actually want to be really good at this game, however, it is a much different story. Let me, let me tell you. <laughs> you are not going to be having a good time if you want to try to get better with Jin and Captain Commando. It's going to take you about 10 years. <laughs> competitively, this game is god-awful. And I can tell you from someone that took this game very seriously for uh, at least a few years of my life, yes. <laughs> Trying to be really good at Marvel vs. Capcom with anything outside of the, uh, the top tier is going to be rough. And to be frank, that applies to the majority of Capcom games around this time frame, from the late 90s to the early 2000s. It's gonna be brutal, man. <laughs>